Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Wieslow. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Boss to Boss. Today's guest is a guy with an unconventional background. He came from a small town with five adults and a few dozen kids. That small town was the home he grew up in. He actually comes from a large polygamous family. He grew up with four moms. Yes, four. And more than 40 brothers and sisters. At one point, he was completely debt in debt. And now, he has paid off $53,000 to officially become debt free for the first time in his life. YouTube show creator, Making the Millionaire, best selling book author, Fish Out of Water, and creator of The Six Figure Secret, a six week boot camp that has helped families and entrepreneurs transform their life. He has written for Entrepreneur Magazine, The Huffington Post, and has his own blog. Calvin Wayman. Brother. Pleasure to have you on the show. Glad that we're, that we're on. <laughs> Here we are. In the most unconventional way, which goes along with their story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just at a, little, a hotel, right? <laughs> just at a conference. Why not? With, yeah. a, with a pool party going on right in front of us, actually. Yeah. We, I don't know if people hear the headset or hear through the audio too much. But, yeah, we, we're, there's like a pool party right in front of us, which is awesome. Literally. So we got, we got the views and we got the content at the same time. Yeah. Can't ask for anything more. <laughs> well, that being said, can you tell us, I mean, can you expand on, uh, on your background just a little bit, at least the intro part? Like, it's just... The polygamy part? Yeah. Just like a few seconds, please. Like, okay, so um, I grew up in polygamy, and it was my normal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything different. I was homeschooled my entire life, um, all through high school. And my upbringing was really good for the most part. Uh, like, very, I guess, safe. I guess probably the best thing. Um, I didn't, I, I had friends all around all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and they were my brothers and sisters. But in my DNA, I, deeper than my DNA, I guess I should say, because my DNA is polygamy. Like my whole family is polygamous. It has been for the last 200 years. My grandfather has, my, my, I, my dad has four wives, four moms. We all grew up together in the same house. Uh, my grandfather has like 10 wives and stuff like that. And that was all my normal. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated high school, after doing construction for four years and realizing that fucking sucks, I decided to uh, go to college. And that was really my first stepping out into this world, I guess, this, this world outside mm -hmm. of the polygamy bubble that I was born into. So, yeah, you can, like, that's, the, that's yeah, the nutshell. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely an eye catcher right away. Yeah. And um, so before you got into everything and you know, be became a, a speaker, a writer, you name it, and just uh, you're you're definitely all over social media. I mean, you look up Calvin Wayman, and uh, I'm around. You're around. You pop up right away, like yeah. in your face, in yeah. your face. So if you you guys will notice this guy, and you'll see him plenty. How did you know? Like, did you was there a turning point in your life when you're like, I'm done, just like working for other people. Oh yeah. I'm ready to become a boss. I kind of just want to yes. take life and go for it. 100%. Where was that? Where was that turning point? Three and a half years ago. Okay. So all, all that's all this stuff is three and a half years ago. Um, this event Thrive was a part that we're at it right now happened that year. So for me, I got to a point where I now was married, graduated college, had a baby, and I think a lot of times we we're always getting ready, like, and we we know that we we want to go do something else, you know. But we don't know if we actually have the know-how, the skills, the lessons to actually crush. And I tried a lot of stuff on the side. Mm -hmm. And then something started to happen. I started to notice time slip. I was going to be a full-time entrepreneur when I finished college. But then 24 came around, and I was still working for the man. And then I was going to do something, and I tried to do stuff on the side, but then 25, I was 25, mm -hmm. that came around, still working for the man. Mm -hmm. Then 26 comes around, I'm, my wife's now pregnant and stuff like that, 
I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, but still working for the man. Then 27 comes around. So I had the idea, I mean, I went to college for business and entrepreneurship. Yeah. So it was there from the beginning, it was there from the get-go. And I was doing all this stuff to learn how to do it, like bus- do, taking, listening to podcasts, reading books, going to school. But I started to notice something. You have a freaking horrible trend. Time is slipping by. Yeah, you weren't getting any younger, man. Yeah, I mean, exactly. The family part is the part that's huge. Yes. The fact that you did it after yes. you already knew you were committed. So this is that's what happened. That's what makes it even better. This is what happened three and a half years ago. I noticed the time slipping, and I was like, there, I noticed this trend, and this, and and I have all this responsibility now, mm-hmm. and I and I'm turning thirty, and there's just something about in three years or whatever, and there's this this thing about approaching that, and I had this horrible. I think that's Jesse Itzler. No, maybe not. But he's just a famous dude anyway. Yeah, can't, <laughs> so wait, can't wait to see him speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I had this moment mm-hmm. where I noticed this trend that I wasn't doing it, and I had this thing where I projected myself 10 years into the future. And I was like, what if I wake up in 10 years and nothing has changed? What if I'm 37, almost 40, mm-hmm. and I'm still in the same spot? Or worse... I have more responsibility, so I have less freedom. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 here's the thought that really was the, the nail in the coffin for me. I was like, what if this desire that I've had for the past six, seven, eight, ten years to go out and do something, what if because I didn't act on it, what if it died? What if in ten years it's just gone? And I then become that old cynical dude that tell, is just pissing on all these other ideas like, wait yep. till life kicks you in the ass. Telling like, everybody else. Telling everybody yeah. else. Go out there and do it. I missed my opportunity. I don't think I, I, I thought of it the opposite. I thought I would be, I, I thought I would just be like in so much regret that I would piss on other people's dreams. Mm. So that day, like mm-hmm. when that really sunk in and I thought about that, I had this interesting moment as I was reflecting on these, this 10 year old, on, on this, my 10 year vision. And I started just closing my eyes and having a conversation with my 10 year older self. and was like, if I could go into the future, what advice would I give myself now? Like what would my 10 year older self give, what advice would he give me now? And literally it was almost like having a dialogue with my older self. It was very surreal because I was not like spiritual or into th- this kind of stuff. It was, just, it was just like a thought experiment, but it was so real. Mm-hmm. And my 10 year older self essentially said, well, as you get older, Calvin, as we get older, you and I, we're going to get more responsibility, not less. Mm-hmm. So if you're ever going to do it, why not now? And I got that day, I got to the point where I, where I was like, I did not want to live with the, the regret of what if. Yep, what yep. if I would have at least tried? And that's when I decided that all of these fears that have been holding me the back, the fear of messing up, the fear of like not knowing how, the fear of all that, I decided I would rather try and fail mm-hmm. horribly, then wake up in 10 years and just wonder what if and, and live a, the, my, the rest of my life in regret. To me, that was already, that was like suicide, soul suicide. So that was the day I was like, I don't know if your show bleeps out curse words or anything. We're good. Okay. We're good. It was the day I was like, fuck it. We're going to yeah. quit. I'm going to quit. And so I went and quit my day job, cold turkey, still had rent to p- pay and bills and all that stuff. I think you have to do it cold turkey at times because like otherwise it, they, you, I did your for mind me. just builds up, builds up, builds up. And it's just like, when are you going to put a stop to it? That's what did it for right. me. Because I had, I came to the point where I, re, where, where, where for me, by the way, a lot of people, t- um, the, I think a point that's important to make is I didn't wait until I was ready. And the bigger fear swallowed the smaller fears. I didn't get to the point where fear was gone. I think a lot of people think they have to build up courage to do it and build up confidence. I didn't build up confidence. I just was aware of this really big shitty fear of the regret and that bigger fear outweighed Mm -hmm. the smaller ones that were holding me back from taking action. And so I ended up taking action, um, quitting my, quitting my job and just taking steps and falling flat on my face, but realizing I would rather try and fail than wake up in 10 years and say nothing's changed. So you, and it sounds like you pretty much didn't know what the hell you were getting yourself into, right? No idea. No idea. Do you think that I had, helped or did Okay. It? So here, I'll take, I'll take that back. I don't want to make it sound like that. I got so gracious. So I had an idea. Uh-huh. I had the idea of, 
I had been, I had dabbled in network marketing. So I was like, well, after I quit my job, I could go all in on that. I also had a friend who was starting a solar company in Southern California. And I was like, that's a possibility. So I had these things, but mm -hmm. nothing set in stone. Yep, yep. And you're right. I, um, you mentioned sometimes we have to like cut that off and burn the boats. For me, it came to the point where I was more into growth and getting to where it is that I wanted to go than, than comfort. Even if it meant burning myself in mm -hmm. so many ways. Like, it's only been three years and it feels like 30 because it's such a painful, especially those first few months uh, are so, so freaking painful. You heard that here. Yeah. This is not... This is not just for anybody. Right? Oh, dude. I mean, it's, it's not. This will. I burn you I away remember. I remember times. thinking that I would not wish this on my worst enemy. Those mm -hmm. first few months, when you have all the stress, all the loneliness, all of the empty bank accounts, all of the what the f am I going to do next, and you don't know what to do next, it's tough. It's emotional it agony. But if you can keep going in those moments, there's some good stuff to come. Yeah, I'll pretty much. It wasn't for me that things really clicked until I was pretty much flat on my ass. Yeah. Uh, pretty much figuring out if I'm going to be sleeping in my uh, work office. That's why that's, burning the boat is important, right? Because yeah, if you if you get to point. that point, if you get to that point and you have the option to mo go back, you mm -hmm. may not stick through it, right? Yeah. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to deny it. There were nights, there were days when Anxiety. I have talks with people and contemplate whether or not I keep going or not yeah maybe I should it go find an, a day job maybe I should go yeah. uh, maybe I should just reel it in maybe I tried that thing and it's not it just wasn't for, for me. me right yeah and I, even though it hasn't been like too long for me it's only been about a you know a year and a few months since I really you know you know said you know F, F all this uh, fuck all this pretty much it's still it wasn't until that point that things really became surreal and yep. real that I went through that I still had to fall back down again, and then I would still tell myself to this day, keep going. Like, totally. just six months, you know, forward, like a foreshadowing. Keep going. Keep going. Like, it's, it's almost all like, be worth it's it. almost like it's you're, you're, you're making your, you're, you're becoming an alignment because with your energy and with the universe, when you make the, 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 the solid commitment, because mm -hmm. when you're all over the place and you're not sure what you're going to do, it just makes things confusing. But if you just like, this is the direction that we're going and you take action and that's the only option, I don't know. I think it can give you a deeper sense of freedom in, in a way. It does because you do feel like you're controlling your own destiny. Yeah. And you're sort of, you're here and at the end of the day, it's not easy because it all falls on you. Yeah. So, you know, you, you mess up, it's uh, it's on you, but yep. you are controlling it. You, at the end of the day, you say what you want to say. Yep. As, as you do, you're, free, you're, you're definitely a free speaker. I, mean, I try to be. That's for sure. It's something that's being developed, but I try to be. It's good, man. Uh, you think there was a moment, there had to be, there had to be a mistake or two you made, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Was there uh, one that, even though you could learn from it, you could have heard about it again, you had to go through it, though, to get to where you're at, like right oh, now, yeah. these, in these past few years? There's several. Okay. Um, here's one that was a, a big burner. I don't think I've talked about too much. Talk about these, we're talking about these low moments, and so I think that's why mm -hmm. it's like on my mind. In December 2015, so I had kind, I've gone and kind of started a, a small little... Uh, solar company as well. So I was doing door-to-door -door sales in Southern California. That was the thing I ended up doing because I was like, I started to recognize that entrepreneurship isn't a walk in the park. And I figured as I'm finding my passion, mm -hmm. I probably should give myself some skills that will help me through this. So I got into door-to-door -door sales and I was selling solar. That in and of itself was like so painful, so many, so many mistakes, so many, so much anxiety, depression, and growth. The worst experience of my life that has made me who I am today. That I would not trade. Huh. But then there's one month in particular. Seriously, I could find, I could give you like at least a half a dozen of really deep stuff, but that just one of them is like life changing, almost traumatic. Mm -hmm. But here was one. After selling people on solar, mm -hmm. you get a good commission check. Yeah. But with the company I worked for, if they canceled before the panels were on, for any reason, because they, they sell, they mm -hmm. said, we're, yeah, we're in, but then there's all this paperwork that has to get done before the panels get on the roof for like the, uh, what do you call it, the, like the city and whatnot. If they canceled, 
the money that you made, you owed back. <laughs> the money that's in your bank account. All right, that's a boss to boss exclusive right there. Oh. You heard it here, everybody. Dude. Pay them back. Yes. Let's talk about talk about like because you're because you're working your ass off just trying to get a sale, yeah. and you're not guaranteed anything because it's 100% commission, mm -hmm. and then somebody cancels, you owe potentially hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars back. Several people canceled in the in December 2015, and I owed back 15 grand, just like that. Fifteen grand vanished. I don't think I've heard of that before. I don't Out really, of my I can't account. think of many companies that do such things. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the pay was pretty damn good when you did make the sales at least. It, it was because you're making between, that was only like three to five people canceling. So it's like between f three and five grand a mm -hmm. solar sale. So that's why it's worth doing and why I wanted to get into it. Because it when you, w when you were making money and when you were on it like you can you can really get a good result but yeah so several people canceled and 15 grand just vanished and that was a really low time yeah that'll that'll set you set you back real quick but also how you get up from that moment right that's that's where this the, is why i think it's helped happens. this is why i think it this is why i think it's helped me um i was given a choice at the beginning of december that mm -hmm. month i could have just stayed and cried i did cry by the way I Nothing did. Wrong with that. Yeah, I I lost my mind. I sat in the kitchen and I was like, "What's this like?" I've now been doing this for almost. Uh, I had done it for like seven, eight months at that point, and thought I was getting used to it and stuff like that. And then just hit after hit after hit, and then breaking through it. And I was like, "Like this was like, how the f am I going to get through this?" And I don't know what it was probably. It was it, life just gives you the the test at like the perfect moment in some ways. Really it was does. almost like, and when you get a good test, this is kind of how I started to view it. I mm -hmm. think it's a really positive mindset. If it's a big one, you can almost take that as a sense of pride. That holy shit, they like the universe. It thinks that I'm capable of this. Right. I like I must be growing, and I, like I must wow. be like that could be something big. Like what what am I gonna do here? And so for some reason I was like I'm, this is an opportunity, and I realized. 15 grand, I've never overcome that before. That's why it's a test. So, and I was like, but what if I do? And I was like, I don't know if I can. All I know is I can try. I can, I can stay crying on my kitchen floor, bawling my eyes out for the next month. And yep. I could say how I did solar for seven, eight months and how it was the hardest thing in my life. I could even say how it did lessons and how it helped me and everything. And that was it. But I was like, what? could I do about it? Is there, what's in my control right now? Am I, am I just going to cuddle up and die? Is this my yeah. life? Is that it? Is that what I'm going to be known for? Yeah. Are and here, gonna... here's the thing. This is what I, what I knew I could do. What I was already doing. I could get up and I could go sell solar. I could get up and go knock doors. Mm -hmm. I did that. And by the end of December, I paid it all back. There you go. I, it was almost like I had, since I had that, that target in my mm -hmm. head and you want to know what? There was nobody else in Southern California that were selling solar in December. Hardly anyone. So, um, so that ended up being the huge opportunity. Like mm -hmm. I, it was, it was, I think officially my biggest month I've ever had. I didn't make that much money because it covered the 15 grand I owed, yeah. but I was in the positive by the end of December. Would you say mindset, that. mindset's a word that's been thrown around a lot, especially here yeah. at this event, Thrive, which by the way, Shout out to Cole Hatter. Thrive yeah. is killing Such it. A good I man. mean, this this is one of the greatest uh, yeah. events I've been at. Yeah, and I, I could say it already, and it's you know only barely halfway through. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a master. Uh, the mindset. It's a word that's been really thrown around. That uh -huh. if you believe it, you'll achieve it, and you'll uh -huh. get it. Is that something that you kind of had to go through? With? Yes. Here's my thing with mindset, though, because I was, I used to be known as the idea guy. I didn't take action. This mm -hmm. like. <laughs> this was what that taught me. Anybody that knows me now would not describe me as a passive idea guy. And that's who I was. And as that passive idea guy, I, lear I read a lot of books, listened to a lot of podcasts, and did a lot of stuff for my mindset. There's nothing that will help your mindset like being in the process, whatever that process is, the process of entrepreneurship. 
Like too many of us are waiting on the sidelines and not actually in the game. And we need to get in the game and be in process so that the mindset can actually sink. So yes, mindset, but I don't want to elude that that means like just even going to a seminar just by itself is it. It was the mindset that was developed by getting up and trying even when I didn't feel like it. Because it sounds really cool and courageous now. Sure the fuck didn't in the minute. No. Like, in the no. moment, it was like no. the, some of the most cre courageous acts mm -hmm. that you will ever do in business or entrepreneurship will look like weak, almost failing steps. Yeah. And that day they did. I don't think I got any sales that day. I, I, sure, I certainly didn't because I was so off. But it was an up. It was a progression from the kitchen floor. And then the next day, it was a progression from the day before. Mm -hmm. And even though I'd had like several days of getting no sales, because I kept going, mm -hmm. all I needed was one taste of blood. And I had that strength that I already developed from not stopping that it was like, just crush. Right. Yeah. And so that's where the mindset developed was in it. Like that bulldog mentality, grab it and don't let go type of a thing. It, it, I mean... There's no better way to learn, I think. And I almost feel that if you are, you know, sitting back there at an office job cubicle, yes, you go through some tough moments, but it's, yeah, life it's, will some, do that. it's some of these moments, especially when you try to start up something on your own and when you do go completely <laughs> Yeah, back entrepreneurship there. by itself I mean, is, is like a personal uh, development thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like going to school all over again and just reteaching yourself another I like another this type life. of school better than anything, actually, because it's so practical and usable. Yeah, so, okay. I actually just uh, recorded about this yesterday because we're, we're older now, obviously, and we're not actually in school. But most mm -hmm. of us, most of us, most of us listeners have gone to school. Mm -hmm. And who, you know, what do we pay? Ten grand? Maybe some people pay two hundred grand. Mm -hmm. You devote, you put a ton of money, ton of sacrifice in the school, mm -hmm. and now you're older. But why should you stop learning? Why should you not invest in an event like this? Thrive, Silly. In a mastermind. Silly. When it's you know, well, let's say it's a couple hundred dollars, thousand bucks. That's minuscule compared to what you paid earlier in your life. One of the craziest. Why would you stop? Yeah, one of the craziest things that I did during this time was uh, put twenty thousand um, dollars on a credit card for a mastermind and for a mentor to help me build my business. I've heard a few people tell me that. And, and it scared the hell out of my mind. That was the most money, like, and in full transparency, that was at that time, 20 grand was like my annual income a couple of years prior. The, I mean, and I didn't even have a $20,000 limit. I had like a, I somehow managed a $10,000 limit and talked them into doing payments or whatever. And so my, my whole master plan was, uh, do like sign in the 20,000 and by the before it maxed out I could make yeah. enough money to start paying it back and stuff like that and you did I didn't actually not oh. a not right away oh okay. uh, I did not start it maxed the out like around gets it started maxing out like around uh, uh, month five or six into the year program month and I was the deepest in debt I'd ever been by making that decision month eight I was debt free for the first time in my entire adult life because it's the and it's so weird. This is like like you can't be attached to the results right away. Instead, you have to be attached to like success is not getting the result. All of the results that we see are just byproducts of what success really is. So, what is success really? Success is really setting a goal or an intention and doing it. If you do that, like, and and have personal integrity, mm -hmm. meaning. All I mean by personal integrity is you do what you say you're going to do. So if you say you're going to go knock on 45 doors. It goes a long way. Just knock on 45 doors. And if you do that, like th I had to make that my success, not the result. Because I was, I was being successful every day without any result for a long fucking time. And then finally, after so much buildup, in January actually, December, the month after that keep going is when I felt my first little where, holy cow, Entrepreneur just published a magazine article of me. Holy crap, people are messaging me like I've done something. Holy cow, I met this guy, Caleb Maddox, who wrote a book, and he's 14. I think I'm going to write a book this year. Like, so many things just started, like, popping. And it was because of the success throughout that that had no results. Because, again, exactly. the doing the things that you say you're going to do. That's so key, keeping going during those tough times. I mean, yeah. ugh. 
Like, like I, I can't stress that enough because I've had numerous moments like that, and there's always a breakthrough. Like, if you, if there's a will, there's a way. I know it's an overset. Where there's a will, well, there's a way, man. There is. That's my last name. Last name's Wayman, so ha. that's the, that's the, line, that's the yeah. line I use. Where Everybody, there's a will, there's a way, man. Everybody tuning in, that's <laughs> Calvin, like Calvin Klein, yeah. Wayman.com. <laughs> or you can just type in Calvin Wayman all over social media, <laughs> and he will be the first one to pop up right away. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that being said, let's just say you are back there where I was a little over a year ago. I was sitting there in a cubicle, you know, contemplating life, you know, depressed, suicidal almost pretty much, and gained 50 pounds, you know, lost people in my life. I didn't know what to do, but I got out of it, and it was the greatest thing I ever did. Love what, it. What would you tell to someone that is in that situation but – they're not sure because obviously this isn't easy. It's not easy. Right. What would you tell that person if they should make that leap or if they should have? If there's a word of there's advice. There's a few things. Done's better than perfect. That's one thing to know because I think when, they're, when they don't know what to do, they're worried about messing up. Mm -hmm. So doing something's better than doing nothing. Any decision is better than indecision. So a lot of times we're worried about making the wrong one. Successful people don't worry about if they made the right decision or not. No, they just keep going. No well, here's what. the thing. The, here's the thing that we, we have a misconception around decision. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably because of society, or school system, like how we are t graded. We select A, B, or C, or D. And so we, 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 we're we trained to think that that there is such a thing as the right or wrong decision. But here's in the, in the real world. This Here's the big secret. It doesn't fucking matter at the point of a decision. The point of decision is not what will determine whether that was the right decision or not. This is a this is a huge idea. If somebody gets this, this is like mind explosion. Will give you freedom to just act and move. It's not the point of the decision that determines if it was the right decision or not. In almost all cases, yep. it's what you do after the decision is made that will make that decision right or wrong in retrospect. So, for example, let's say two people get married. Did I make the right, wrong decision? I gave this corny example of, in my book. Let's say... Probably. Yeah, let's say, <laughs> let's say Bob and Sally get married, but Bob is not sure if he made the right decision. If Bob isn't sure, he's going to notice Betsy and Betty and Pamela and all these other chicks who's like, maybe that's the one I should have married. What's he going to do? He's going to be looking at other people. Maybe he's going to cheat. Maybe he's going to, at the very least, over time... What's going to happen in that relationship? It might deteriorate. Yep, yep. But instead of worrying about the decision, what if you make the decision and then make it right? Don't worry about if you made the right decision or not. Make the decision, then make it right. So if he makes the right decision, or if he makes the decision and then just acts as though that was the right decision, and he goes all in on Sally, his wife, and is like, that was the right decision. Obviously, it's the right one. He's, and he's not noticing other options because that was the right one. What's going to happen with that relationship? It's going to naturally flourish and grow. So here we have two completely different scenarios or any yep. points. And this is the point. At the point of this decision, they were exactly the same. So successful people don't worry if they made the right decision or not. Instead, just make the decision, then make it right. It's the focus, the energy, the attention, and everything that you do after the decision is made that's going to determine whether it's good or bad. And uh, one final thing for people that are in the cubicle and they're trying to decide, here's the thing that will help you get moving. We're also confused and think that we need to know all the steps from A to Z of how to get to somewhere. All you need to know is like, well, here's the thing. In life, you're never going to know A through Z. You can know where you want to end up. Do you want to be a speaker? Do you want to be an author? Do you want to be on tour? Do you want to be into entertainment? Do you want to have your own business? Mm -hmm. We know our Z. We know the goal, okay? Then, here's the other secret to life. We do not need to have it completely mapped out all the way. All no. you need are the th you, all you need. You don't need 26 letters in the alphabet. All you need are three. You need A, B, and Z. So Z, as I just mentioned, is where you want to end up. Mm -hmm. B, or sorry, A, is where you are right now. So you already have those ones pretty clearly laid out. You know that you want to be an entrepreneur. You know you're in a cubicle and it sucks. So you know your Z. You know your A. Then the only thing you need to know from that is what's the next step from this point to this point. Hmm. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was in a day job I didn't like. My next step was quitting my job. And that's it. That's all you had to know. And yeah, I didn't know what C was. I didn't know what D was. All I knew was the next step. And that's the thing. 
is things start to stack when you're in the game and in process. When you're just learning on the sidelines, nothing stacks. And this is a concept I can't even explain to people mm -hmm. unless they get into it. There's on The only people that get it are people that are like on the court, in the arena, going after yep, it. Yep. And, and so you just learn. And then when you're at B, C unfolds. What's the next step from there? And then from there. So if you're stuck, you don't know what to do, get it clear on, at least clearer on where you want to go. See where you are now and just take the next step. And, and here's the thing. I, I love to tell listeners as well. That being said, if you do take that next step and you do fail and you just realize, you know, mental or physically, mentally, it's not for you, you could always go back. Totally. And that doesn't mean you're going back to step A. You're still progressing totally. towards your end goal. You learned. You just learned that right. it's in a different, it's maybe in a, right. in an entrepreneur kind of way, right. being towards a business, you know, being at a business and crushing it there. Right. Or just maybe you have other things that you put first and obviously things change over time. That being said, that was very valuable. I know our listeners will find that very, very valuable. But now, unfortunately, or for some very fortunately, but for you, it is our favorite segment of the show. Welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken. You are lucky my producer is not here, but I hear he might be lurking. Okay. He might be lurking in the area. The main rules you need to know is you got five seconds to okay. initiate an answer for each question. Okay. We could always elaborate later on, but we just want you to stick with it. Whatever you think, that's what you got to say. Dill. Hey, otherwise, he is going to... He's somewhere around. I don't he's know. actually here at Thrive? He's somewhere here. Sweet. Okay. And he's going to pop out, and uh, we don't, we don't want to have to deal with him. Cause okay. They, uh, they call him a leg breaker for a reason. Mm, okay. <laughs> I want to... I'll, I'll be good. Okay. I'll, I'll stick to my answer. I'm, I mean, I'm worried myself, so... Okay. All right. What is your favorite book? Can't be your own. <laughs> Fuck. Um, how to Win Friends and Influence People. Solid answer. Who is or has been your greatest mentor? Gary Vaynerchuk. I can attest to that. If you're stranded on an island and pretty much you don't see your way yourself getting out anytime soon, what is the one item you want with you? My iPhone. <laughs> Very thought out answer. Is entrepreneurism a fad? Yes. All right. How do you, I know you have to, how do you drink your coffee? Regular with almond milk. Regular, like? So I go to Starbucks and just say I want a house coffee with steamed almond milk. Okay, okay. So if I'm we, actually uh, easy with coffee. That, I, that is pretty. I'm so, like, because people I know are really special with it. Oh, yeah, it. you got to get, I mean, some people you need a certain bean. Yeah. It's got to be a certain roast. Yeah, I'm, I'm very Everything. easy in a lot of ways. Like, some people were like, I, I was given a wine list mm -hmm. the, the, um, the other day at a restaurant. And they're like, what would you like? And I was like. Can I be totally honest with you? I have no idea what any of these are. Pick something, please. If it's red, great. I, I don't know anything. I'm not going to lie. I usually pick the one that sounds cool, especially yeah. if it's like I'm just going this for This is how one. bad if it they was. they sound cool, I'll pick This it. is how bad it was. I was like, actually, you know what? Yes, I want a rosé. Give me a rosé. And they give me a rosé. And I I'm ex I, I think that I, I thought it was going to be like red wine, and it's like the girly, like, clearer kind Sparkly. that's how bad it, yeah yes. i was like i was like yes. i was like oh yeah, yeah, yeah yo, exactly that's exactly what i wanted thank you hey no yeah. shame in that man yeah. yesterday so i'm trying to i'm trying this whole gluten-free thing and yesterday i ordered uh well and just trying to watch calories here and there i ordered um chick margarita that's mm -hmm. what it was called it was like the skinny chick margarita or something and uh you know i was on a table with full of everybody uh, no shame no yeah. shame i'll uh I'll do it. So the one uh, thing to elaborate on, I think, with the fad, uh, with entrepreneurship being a fad, all I mean there is a lot of people, I think I agree with Gary Vee here wh that a lot of people are getting in it because it's uh, it's a good time. But it's at the same time, time, it's also a great time for entrepreneurship to, to, to really do. I don't think that it, I'm saying that nobody should do it and that uh, it's going to go away. It's never going to go away. Um, I think some people just get in it or say that they are and stuff like that. And honestly, I was. Like, I had so many back and forth in my mind. I'm like, am I getting in the fad or not? And I think the only thing that's going to determine, that has determined that to this point is if I'm going to stick with it or not. Like, through all this tough time, am I going to keep going? What's mm -hmm, what's mm -hmm. what's bigger? Like, the, the, the glory of the fact that I am or the impact that I'm looking to make? So, How do you feel about white socks with black shoes? 
white socks with black shoes. Horrible. I'd be horrible. I used to. I've seen people Why? like that in church. Why? <laughs> horrible. Cotton white socks in church. Those are people you make fun of. Those what are people. If your brother did that, you're like you. You have ammo. What if I'm, make, what if I'm making a statement? It's my. We know. Mm. What if? What if I'm trying to make a statement and now you're talking about me, and it's like, all right, I'm that guy. I'll, I I can re- I can to relate me? to that. Would you even talk to me though? I have some list- some guests that said they wouldn't even talk to. I don't know, person. man. Because here's the thing: I did the opposite in my in in my circle, like mm-hmm. my church circle. Except I did the exact opposite. Everybody's used to seeing black shoes, oh, yeah. so I wore white shoes, but kept the black socks. Black socks. No, it was probably like a color, color colorful sock, but it was at like a church slash uh, Christmas event and I was mm-hmm. the and I was in the choir type of thing and I was the only one with white shoes and it blew people's shit They're like, oh my gosh like somebody was like are you kidding me your grandmother is rolling in her grave right now oh my gosh like such a scene oh, I was like man sh- what are you talking about comments, so, comments yeah. like that make me cringe oh dude it, yeah I was like are you saying your our, my grandma it, like this is somebody that we like She's probably is really in her grave right now, but it's probably more for us not being nice to each other right now and stuff like that. Exactly. Like, their shoes. Exactly. It's Christmas time. Exactly. S- snow is white. Let's, like, there's nothing wrong with white shoes. Anyway. I mean, that could be a whole other show yeah, right there. totally. So uh, I will cut you off. Yeah. <laughs> but what is the one item, one item you consume every day? It could be a food, a drink, or something you wear on you, on your person, that you need that makes you different. Be specific. The one thing that's a good anchor is is an app on my phone called Calm that I use for meditation. That's mm. been a good thing that I do almost on the daily. I just barely broke my streak. I hit like 183 days in a row meditating because oh, wow. it like tracks it. Um, but that's that's been really good because throughout this whole conversation that we've had with all the craziness of how we've gotten through the, it. The craziness of everybody walking around? No, I mean the craziness of entrepreneurship, the craziness yeah. of the craziness of how do I get through this stuff. The mm-hmm. way you get through it, I think, is getting right in your mind, and that has really, really helped. Um, having, like, having 10 minutes, being able to sit down and get clear with yourself. So, And it's, it's been a theme, too, amongst a lot of the speakers, a lot of people, especially uh, E.T., he was huge about that, just getting away and uh-huh. literally being with your mind, speaking up. One of my favorite things I've done this past year, was, this past year and a half, I do, I'm going to be doing it in a couple of weeks here. I'm so excited. I do something called a recalibration. Some people think I should just call it recal for Calvin or something, but I call it recalibration where I disconnect from everything, mm-hmm. social media, cell phone, email, everything for three days, just somewhere. And that has been so game changer. Like you just you just come out of that feeling so refreshed and rejuvenated and ready to kick ass for the next three months. That uh, was what I did right before I uh, made the move to quit, you know, my, you like my whole career. I mean, yeah, I was disconnected for about four days almost because I went to the Appalachian Mountains uh-huh. when I was backpacking uh-huh. and I lost service when I got in there uh-huh. and that was it. Uh-huh. That was it and I was by myself. Yeah. That was a game changing totally. moment in my life, in yeah. my life. Yeah. So I can definitely attest to that, man. Uh, Lastly, if you were to start a business today, you had pretty much unlimited capital and you could do anything you want, what would it be? Exactly what I'm doing right now. The six figure secret. I do something that helps people get out of debt and that's what made me go after it. I was in debt, I fucking hated it. But more than that, the thing I love about entrepreneurship and what we're doing right now is when p- I love the fact that people, with the, the, the world that we live in, in 2018 we can create and design any Anything. life that we want. And so the reason I'm so passionate about helping people get out of debt is that's something that is a, it's, it, is, it is the single biggest enemy to somebody's freedom and their betterment of life. Like if somebody's getting divorced, there's like a 76% chance it had something to do with money. Mm-hmm. If people aren't leaving their day job for some fear, it's like, it's like they, don't, they don't feel secure enough financially. That was a big one for me. So I would just be scaling it and getting even more people involved, but helping people become free to pursue their life through getting out of debt and stuff like that is something I would do and continue to do. So the six figure secret, where could, uh, where could the listeners find out more about that? Right now, um, it's so, it's, 
we've been selling out every month and it's still by invite only. So the very best thing to do is to go to my website, CalvinWayman.com. I don't even have a website dedicated to that yet. Really? Be yeah. And it's still, I've just been growing it through social media. And, and then people have to like apply to come in because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. go through it with a team of people, almost like a mastermind of people. And I think that's really why it's been working. It's not just about the content that I put in there, but it's the how it's a group of people, 15-ish people that are going through this journey together that makes it stick and is a is an environment of support that helps people change the behaviors that they need to change to shift their financial picture. So That being said, do you have something per, per, uh, currently going on, maybe some kind of promo or anything for the listeners uh, for any event or anything like maybe the, where they could find you? Um, they, the best pl place, again, to, for anything I have going on is my website, calvinwayman.com, or you mentioned on social media if somebody's in, on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, see what I'm up to at that time. Just Are you doing some sort of events or any uh, giveaways or anything that's coming out or just just curious? I have not, a not couple to, Not things. to put you on the spot. No, 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 no it's all good. <laughs> there's, I'll say there's one thing that I, I'll say this. There's something coming in November. Okay. That's the single biggest thing I've ever done, and I'll tell you off the air. Okay. <laughs> and is it something I could possibly promote then later? Maybe in February. 2019. Okay. So it's going to be between me and you. It's a big fat secret. Not even my audience knows, but it's going to be huge. Well, then stay tuned, listeners. Yeah. I will definitely keep you in touch, keep you informed. Yeah. Well, I'll try to. I'll see what I can say. Okay. <laughs> well, all right, man. I'll, uh, I'll let the mic be yours for the last few seconds or minutes. And, you know, any closing thoughts on, on pretty much our yeah. interview and how you felt? Felt great. Um, but just closing thoughts, I think bringing it down to the, the distilling the theme of what to do, I think. If I was giving advice to myself mm -hmm. again or like somebody that's getting in the game and starting and somebody just listened to all this, I'd say become a member of the CIA, man. <laughs> become a member of the CIA. And I'm not saying join the Secret Service. What does the CIA stand for? Consistent, imperfect action. If you do that, man, you just commit to that consistent, imperfect action. We're our own worst critic and we think it has to be perfect. But give yourself the permission to look ugly, fail, fall down. It's what we did as kids, and we turned out all right. So let's keep using that. Consistent, imperfect action, and we can't help but win. I love that, man. I'm not even going to bother or try to say anything else after that. Love it. So it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, this has been fun. Yeah, awesome Thanks. connecting, and we'll keep, uh, keep at it here at the event. Okay. We'll talk again soon. All right. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. Again, that is boss, the number two, boss.com. And remember, the time is now.